Hello everyone, I'm Chris Wynn. Welcome to the Walker Report podcast in association with the Sunland Community Soup Kitchen. We have the pleasure of having the company of Malcolm Dugdale and Bomber to help dissect Sunderland's 1-1 draw tonight against 10-man Shrewsbury Town. Uh, Alex Pritchard opened the score in the 15th minute to put us one up before Shrewsbury went down to 10 men when David Davis was sent off uh, in first half injury time, which I'm sure we'll get into with the lads. Uh, second half was possibly uh, one of the most frustrating 45 minutes I've ever seen. When uh, 64 minutes, uh, Adua uh, equalised with a smart uh, half volley from the edge of the box. Quite a good goal, actually, which they probably deserved at that point. And it ended frustratingly in a 1-1 draw uh, when we couldn't find a late winner. So let's get into it. We'll start with Bomber. Good to speak to you, mate. It's been a while. Hello. Yeah, it has been a while. Yeah. good. To, well, I was going to say good to be back, but I always seem to make <laughs> reappearances on the back of bitter disappointment. So I'm starting to wonder, wonder whether it's worth it. Yeah. Well, we'll start with you, mate, and a, a bit of a kind of high level to start with. Obviously, we've gone away to Shrewsbury, struggling at the wrong end of the table. They've gone down to 10 men, first half injury time, so we've got 45 minutes to play against them with 10 men. Words like frustrating, disappointing spring to mind. What was your assessment mm. of the night? Yeah, it was um, It was one of those, uh, those Jekyll and Hyde performances, wasn't it? I mean, it was all looking so good uh, at half time them going down to 10 men just before before half time came with us being one nil up i mean you'd never in your in your wildest well not your wildest dreams in your wildest nightmares <laughs> imagine that is anything but a, a Sunderland win coming off the coming off the back of that as the players are going in at half time but we just we just didn't really get going in that second half and it was it was it looked like a completely different team that was out on the pitch all the good stuff that was coming from Pritchard and and Luca Nine in that first half, I thought they were brilliant down that left hand side together. Luca Nine was getting in loads of space, was getting forward, was attacking. Um, Pritchard's goal was was fantastic, and we saw absolutely none of it in that second half. Really, there were a couple of half chances. You, you know, one fell to to Luca Nine right halfway through that second half, but we once again were just a victim of our own downfall because there's no, there's no excuse. I can't think of a of a valid excuse as to why. We should come away from that game having anything but three points. Um, I, you know, I, I can't really, I can't describe it. It's just, it was two different teams, Chris. For me, it was two different teams that, from that first half to the second half. Same, same eleven players, but two completely different teams. And I, and I don't know why. And yeah, I think you sum it up perfectly well by saying frustrated and disappointed. Yeah, I was, um, uh, which always seems to happen. I was uh, willing you on there to say it's a game of two offs, but you didn't didn't quite pull it off. No, I'm I'm for... I am a cliche machine <laughs> sometimes, but <laughs> well, uh, well, we'll come on to you, Malk, uh, to get to get your assessment, and uh, it's good to speak to you, mate. We said for uh, uh, before we came on, it's been a while since uh, since I caught up with you, Malk. Yeah, it has been, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been a little while. Uh, like Bomber, I tend to be blessed with talking about disappointment and misery and stuff like that but um, <laughs> but you know yeah it, it, it was it was you know I'm, I'm not going to be the one to let you down Chris it very much was a game or two hours <laughs> I think Bomber isn't far from the truth there well just just I mean on, on that point I mean at times though Mal I mean we looked so comfortable in the game first off you know we, we were kind of knocking it about well and then suddenly you know, a couple of times in the first half, there was hints of it when we got caught in possession in midfield a couple of times in our own half. Um, but but we suddenly just like snapped into sloppy mode at times, and then other times look look brilliant. I mean, what how how can you sum up the whole thing? It was just broken and fractious, and you know there was communication errors several times. People were trying to play telepathic passes that other people didn't pick up on, giving the ball away. It was almost like when we had an extra man, they didn't know what to do. You know, we were talking on the on the WhatsApp chat during the match about this. You know, it's fundamental mathematics. We've got 11 players. They've got 10. If you keep passing it and moving it, eventually there'll be a gap where we've got a player and they haven't. And if that's in the box, you're probably going to score a goal. But even when we had that advantage in the second half, we never passed the ball and moved quick enough to take advantage of the space and the, the manpower that we should have taken advantage of, in my view. You know, we were trying to dribble people. Why do you try and dribble people when you've got an extra man? Just play a handful of one-twos and you're 80 yards up the pitch and thinking about scoring. It just didn't make sense. It was like they lost the plot. They didn't know what to do. Um, to be fair to Shrewsbury, in the second half, they came out and really wanted it more than we did. 
Um, you know, the 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 red card, I'm sure we'll come on to that briefly, but you know, it's debatable whether that was a solid red um with the tackle that the lad put in. Uh, and it's almost as if their coach gave them more of a rocket and a, an inspirational chat at half time to get a goal and then see if they can hold out. Um, whilst our team sat there expecting the the win to just come to them, maybe, um, and our coaching team just didn't give them the fuel that they needed to to do the job, you know. And and it should happen. There's no there's no lack of expectation, you know. I was just looking before we started recording. We had McGeady sent off uh, against Rotherham, wasn't it? Fifty six minutes. Granted, we were three one down when he went off. But they put two extra goals in against ten men, and that's Rotherham versus Sunderland. That isn't a top end team versus a bottom end team. Mm. So the big yeah. question for me is why can we not kill teams off like they did us on that occasion when we've got that extra advantage for even longer than they did? You know, it's just it's not good. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for for that scenario, I mean, I'd argue that we we were kind of more open against Rotherham because we were chasing the game. But I mean, Bomber, just on on Mark's point about Shrewsbury, I mean. I mean, I made the point in the in the match preview on the website that they'd played eight games at home and they'd won four of them. You know, in terms of you know they're they're down at the bottom of the table, but just going off home form this season, they're kind of mid table because they've only picked two points up away from home this season. So I mean, on their on home soil, the kind of no mugs in in a sense. And I think in that first half, they hinted at it because I, even though at times I thought we looked comfortable when we passed it about, I always thought we were almost wide open at times when Shrewsbury really kind of caught us on the break. And they could have nicked a goal a couple of times in that first half. Mm-hmm. Even, even yeah. a, I think there was one in the 10th minute when um, really early on they could have taken the lead when he went through and Bailey Wright had to make a last-ditch tackle. Yeah, it was a good tackle from, from Bailey Wright, that was. Yeah, they, they, had a, they had a couple of opportunities and there, there were warning signs um, throughout that first half. I think we by and large forgot about them because in in other patches we you know we looked so good going forward that we almost weren't that bothered about the chances that they were creating. I certainly felt that even if we conceded, we'd outscore them at that point throughout that first half. Um, and then when we went one nil up, which was relatively early on, I was like, well, that, that's it. Then how many are we how many are we going to get? It's, you know, it, fully expecting it to be two, three, four. Um, I, I take your point that they are that Shrewsbury are, are obviously better at home than they are away, but even so, I don't care who you are, 1-0 down, down to 10 men, you can't be expected to get anything back from that game, no matter how good you are at home. Um, you know, home records and away records or anything like that kind of goes out the window when you're a goal down and, and a man down. And, you know, at the end of the day, we've, we're, we're Sunderland Football Club, you know, we should be expecting to beat any team outside of that top six at home and away. That, that's how I feel anyway. That's how big a club we are in this division. And and that's what my expectation is. If we if we want to go up, you know, the, the likes of, of Rotherham and, well, I guess Plymouth to a certain extent until recently, they're not going to Shrewsbury going, oh, you know what, they've got a pretty decent home record. Be be all right to get away with a draw here. They're expecting to beat anyone in that bottom half of the table. They're expecting to beat home and away. Um, and that's what I expect from us. Building off that though, Bomber, I mean, you know, football's football and, you know, you can't win them all and, and you know, sometimes it it goes the wrong way. But would you mind as much if there wasn't as much huffing and puffing tonight? You know, if we really just, you know, if we wiped the floor with them clearly, but we just couldn't find the back of the net or something like that. And, you know, the performance was there, but we, we but we got the draw. Would it feel less disappointing? Yeah, I think so. You know, if we'd have, if we'd have, let's say we put the ball in the back of the net and it was given for offside, or we hit the crossbar a few times, if we were piling on pressure and had chance after chance after chance, and they were doing a more stereotypical ten men ten man performance of sticking, you know, nine behind the ball, and and we were just it was just wave after wave after wave, then yeah, you'd be disappointed, but you you know you'd hold your hands up and go, okay, yeah, we just couldn't break them down on the on the night. As it happens. It, that wasn't the case. They were down to 10 men. They pulled back an equaliser and actually you wouldn't have begrudged them a, a, a winner at, at some point during that second half mm. because we were that poor. Um, and that makes it kind of stick in the throat that little bit more um, mm. and make does make it that little bit more unacceptable. Um, but yeah, you know, if it had been complete one-way traffic, I, you, you know, you just go, oh yeah, it was one of those nights, all right, four points from the last two games we take. As it happens, you know, with 45 minutes to go after a game and a half, 
you're expecting if I you know you think back to the Ipswich game we got three points there one nil up at half time in this game you're expecting to come away with six points from those two games and I know people will say oh do you know what before at two o'clock on Saturday you you'd be happy with four points from these last two games yeah you would but having got through the Ipswich game and got it, got three points, mm. you're coming into Shrewsbury fully expecting to win and then six points is actually brilliant and, and puts us back in amongst it and puts us back in that hunt. And I know we've got, get, got games in hand, but as um, I think uh, Danny Collins alluded to after the game, saying how many times have we said, oh yeah, but it's okay, we've got games in hand and actually we've done nothing to, to capitalise on them. Mm. That was a chance to get another two extra two points from what we probably anticipated and probably were happy with on the board and we've we've failed miserably yeah um, just a couple of incidents in the game just quick talking points um, Malk the, the sending off you, you hinted earlier on did you think that was a bit soft I think the the decision was made more by the line or the linesman than the ref um, the ref clearly got a, a bit of a um, earful from the touch judge um, and uh, he called him across and, and mentioned a few things I think it was a yellow till the linesman intervened. And to be fair, the linesman was the camera side of the pitch looking straight at it. So he probably saw stuff that we didn't. Um, mm. it, I think it was a harsh red. And I've seen yellows given for that in this league. I've seen nothing given for that. You know, his legs were either side of our players. You know, there was no studs near mm. shins. Um, you know, so I, I thought it was quite harsh. But, you know... Conversely, there's times when we've had our players nearly snapped in two and got nothing. So you take them when you get them. Uh, but as we've said, we didn't really capitalise on it. Yeah, but mate, uh, what did you make of this ending off? You're, you're still playing the seniors yeah, on, a, on a Saturday I'm, or Sunday? I'm, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's no different to what you see on the, in, in the local parks. Um, but, you know, I, I, I always think, uh, you know, would I be disappointed if that was given against us? And, you know, if, if Carl Winchester had done that tackle and got a red card, I'd be pretty upset about it. I've seen reds not given for a lot worse. Yeah, there was a, it looked like anyway, on some of the replays, there was a slight scissor action to the, to the tackle and a bit of a follow through and it was a little bit naughty. For me, it's a yellow, it's a strong yellow. It's that, I'm going to use a bit of a cliche, it's an orange card. You know, <laughs> it's one of those, you can <laughs> you can see why it's given, but from yeah. from my personal point of view, it it's probably a yellow and a stern telling off and saying, Anything else, you're gone. Yeah, that's, uh, but we'll take it. There's Bomber with uh, splinters in his ass there, sitting on the fence. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but a um, couple of other things I wanted to mention just about the, about the team, about a couple of performances. Malk, I was quite happy to see Alex Pritchard get a run out tonight, and I thought he looked lively, got a cracking goal. <laughs> kind of went off the boil like the rest of the team and came off a sub, but uh, how do you think he got on, Malk? Yeah, yeah he, he played well. Um, he had a few early touches where they were poor, and I was starting to think, is it going to be another one of them Pritchard games where he just can't get into it? But, uh, you know, he, he created his own goal. You know, obviously he got an assist with the corner at the weekend as well. So he's finding a bit of form. I was actually disappointed that he got took off because I think there were other players on the pitch who had underperformed more than him. Um, Aidan O'Brien being one of them. Um, but... Maybe he's still, you know, trying to to build up match fitness and and capability. I don't know because you know he's not had um a massive amount of games, but he had a, he had a good game. Yeah, um, he 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 kept his width a lot of the time as well. And and again, that's another thing that we didn't do when we had the extra man. You know, pull the guys from touchline to touchline and get them out wide running, get them tired, and then you, they'll make mistakes. You know. Uh, we just didn't do a lot of those things that even us guys as laymen know you should do when you've got an extra body. Um, yeah. But a good, a good, a good solid appearance for him, an assist, and then a goal. Hopefully, that'll now give him some some confidence. And he took that goal really, really well. It was. It was a bit like an Embo special the other side, wasn't it? It was a really good goal. Yeah, good finish, good finish. And one other thing I wanted, I wanted to talk to you about, Bomber, was um, Lyndon Gooch at full-back. I know he mm. stepped in there for the odd game previously, come off the bench to go full-back or moved later on in games. But uh, what do you make of kind of that little experiment that we seem to be having with Lyndon Gooch going back to full-back? So I prefer Lyndon Gooch at full-back. It was an observation I made on Twitter, actually, at half-time, is that for me, Lyndon Gooch is a, is a full-back. You know, he's... He is, I'm going to be careful how I phrase this because I'm going to open myself up to criticism possibly, but Lyndon Gooch is fast, he's he's committed and he's a, a very good technical player. 
but he's not an intelligent footballer. He hasn't got a footballing brain. And for me, in that final third, his decision making, etc., is ju- it ju- it's just he makes the wrong decisions time after time after time. At right back, his defensively, he can get involved, he can recover, he can make tackles. There was a couple of times actually where I think he threw himself in front of the ball, um, just as a Shrewsbury player was um was about to sh- w- was taking a shot on goal. But when it, go, when it when it comes to coming forward, he can pick the ball up a little bit deeper and get crosses in. And like I said, he's a good technical footballer, so he can put a cross in. But at right back, he has to do less of that decision making. It's kind of get up, support the play, receive it, get the ball into the box. Or if you receive it in, you know, if you win it back or you receive it in our third, you play it down the channels. Uh, it, you know, he's, he's not got to think too much. And I, I do think that's probably his best position. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, like I say I probably stand myself open to criticism of that, but he's I, for me he's not intelligent enough a footballer to to be in those wide positions for us anymore. So in in, in summary, um, Malk, I'll come to you first. Um, this, as I said, frustrating, disappointing. Always is when you draw to someone that you you really expect to pick three points up against. But um, in your mind, Malk, where does that leave uh, Lee Johnson at the moment? Do you think tonight's result uh, cranks the pressure up a little bit, uh, especially? You know, with the, I haven't seen any of the reaction on social media yet, but I, I can probably imagine what it's going to be like. I think it's it's going to trigger the usual audience. Of course it is, because people are passionate about our football club, so they should be. Um, whether it makes any difference to the ownership uh, and the coaching team, I doubt. Um, you know, we could have lost that game, being honest, lads. You know, in that first 10-minute spell, there were two or three opportunities where we didn't talk to each other at the back and they got through and they could have took the lead early on. And if they'd have done that, we would have been in big trouble, you know. And, and we might have won the game at the end when Broadhead pulled a bloody volley out of nowhere and hit the side of the post. Um, so it wasn't a good performance. The coach is going to get a bit of a earache. Um, where, you know, we, we didn't lose, but we absolutely should have won. So there's going to be a lot of questions asked. The only cop out he's got is the same cop out that the manager had at this time of the year last year, which is how many bloody defensive injuries we've got, you know, um, and we look very very disjointed in in places. Um, so he's he's going to get a rake. Do I think it'll make a difference to the club? Uh, no, I don't. Um, we've got to get out there on Saturday, um, over at Cambridge. A game that I'm I'm looking forward to going to live, and we've got to get a proper result, and just start moving the general performances up a few notches. You know, mm. we were talking about it's okay if we perform well. The fans showed that they appreciate a good performance that doesn't come well when we lost one nil at the start of the season to Burton. You know, everybody took it. They were like, yeah, fair enough. We we should have battered them. We lost one nil to an ugly, an ugly situation. Um. If we get back to that, then that's more acceptable. But he's he's going to have a lot of questions, but I don't think it'll make a lot of difference to the real situation. And for you, Bomber, I mean, I, I did see a comment, interesting, like, look at things earlier on, where, you know, if, if we'd drew against Ipswich and beat Shrewsbury tonight, people might be looking more positive on things, even mm-hmm. though we'll come out the two games with four points. But uh, but but what do you think the impact of, uh, well, tonight and, and maybe combined with uh, Saturday? Yeah, I think it would have been, I mean, it goes without saying that it would have been a lot worse if we hadn't come away with that kind of final throws victory against, um, against Ipswich on Saturday. For me, it doesn't make a difference. It hasn't changed my mind. I still think Lee Johnson um, should at least have the season unless that things go drastically wrong i mean let's put things into perspective here yeah we're not on a great run of we're not on a great run of form results or performance wise but we're still in touch um you know i'd like to think that even if things didn't really change that much from the from a coaching and managerial perspective we're a good enough side to get enough points to get us into the playoffs um we're still within touching distance of the automatic promotion places and there's still a long way to go in the season. Um, so I think it would be very knee jerk to to kind of for the for the management to or the club management to buckle under the pressure and get rid of Lee Johnson. The fact of the matter is that there's just no one around really to replace him, um, even if we were going to. So just just stick with him, back him, trust that he'll get things right. And I think the squad is is good enough and has enough potential to be there or thereabouts regardless of who's managing them really. So yeah, I, I, w- I don't want to see anything knee jerk. 
it's frustrating and I can understand fans' frustrations, but, you know, come on, let's let's get real. We're not really going to get anybody better than him if we were to get rid of him at this stage of the season. We're not that far away and we've still got two thirds of the season to go. So yeah, frustrating night all round, I think, and mm. we move on to, to Cambridge on Saturday. So thanks, Bomber. Thanks, Malk. And uh, thanks, everyone, for, for listening. Uh, keep a look out at Rock Report for all the build up ahead of uh, the game against Cambridge on Saturday and all the reaction after the final whistle, as usual. I'm sure another podcast will be dropping very soon. But from us, it's bye for now. <laughs>